Okay, this is going to be a quick video on 3D Coat, but this video will focus on using an FBX export from ZBrush. The difference between using an FBX and an OBJ is that the FBX will hold metadata that will allow us to use many meshes or subtools, and the FBX will still retain their names. And this would be good because this way we can hide and show parts of our sculpt and retopo those pieces separately. There may be some subtools or extra meshes on your model that will be hard to retopo because they're too close to each other. For instance, this model that I created and I'm going to use for this demo, uh, it would be awfully hard to retopo behind the teeth and get to you know the parts underneath while those meshes are in the way. So you want to be able to hide and show them. Now what's interesting about 3D Coat is that any separate mesh or subtool, once in 3D Coat as an FBX, it will assign each one a separate material. And that's what we're going to use in 3D Coat to hide and show the parts that we want to retopo. So first things first, you should stay organized and name all your parts. Now I have a lot of parts here. One thing that is more like a tip is that you will see that the very top subtool I have here is just a sphere, not sculpted or anything, but it's in my scene. The reason for this is because once you save a Z tool, it will take the top subtool and name it whatever you named the file. So even though you can see that this, the body of this sculpt says body high, if I saved it as something else, for instance, angular whale high v4 deci, you know, whatever I named it, it will replace this subtool's name with the save file name. So a nice way to avoid that is you have all your pieces named the way you want and just append something into the scene and leave that at the top. So only that thing will get renamed what your file is and you can just hide it and you'll never have to see it again and it won't be part of our export it'll just always get the name it's going to take the hit and get named while everything else will stay the original mesh name okay so with that out of the way uh, the next thing we want to do is look at all of our parts and see what potentially we could combine so we don't have a whole bunch of parts. Things that will be similar. We have the teeth here. If you want to make sure that the upper teeth and lower teeth are separate, then you'll keep them separate. This angular piece is separate. We have the big eyes and the small eyes. We have the fin. And we have the light orbs and the body. So one thing I would want to do is either remove subtools that don't need to be there or combine subtools that can be part of one thing. So for instance, I'm looking at these body high orb things. If we do solo, this is what they are. If we're going to retop with this for a game, we don't really need these orb things on the model because we're going to be retopping right over this. So what would happen is we would have to kind of go around all of these and that's not really going to be efficient. So the best thing to do would probably be to remove them. Make sure before you do any deleting of subtools or combining of subtools that you make this a new separate save. Don't overwrite the stuff that you, your original. So I'm just going to delete that. Say, okay, you can't get it back, just make sure. Because once we're in 3D code, we're just gonna retopo, make new geometry above it. We don't need the spheres, they're just gonna be in the way. The other thing I want to do is I would like to combine this body with this fin. So here's the fin part. And then you have the body part. So those could go together. We can retopo those at the same time. So I'm just going to go to the, the top, the body, and I'm going to just go to merge. And I'm just going to merge down. It's going to say, okay, you can't undo this. So now I have this one tool with the fin on it. The eyes can stay separate. I think the angler could stay separate. You could potentially retopo that 
together with the body. I want to keep it separate. The two up and lower teeth is fine to stay separate, and the tongue can stay separate as well. So the thing we want to do before we actually export is, well, which I've already done here, is go through decimation. Now, there's another video that covers the procedure to decimate a model. What we're doing is we're chopping down all the geometry but keeping the detail so we can get it into 3D coat and not have it crash. Right now it is at about 2.6 million, which is pretty good. But we can go through one small step of decimation just so you can understand the process. So for instance, this angular part is not optimized. You can see right now it has 683,000. We could get that lower and still have the detail. So in the plugin, I want to go to Decimation Master, and we want to pre-process the current subtool. And depending on how much geometry is in it, it can take from a few seconds to even a minute or two to process the whole thing. This should go pretty quickly because it's not like a, a big mesh. So once that's done, we'll go back to the Z plugin. And the next thing to do is decimate current. The only uh, other option you want to look at here is this percentage of decimation. It defaults at 20%. We could take that lower. First, I'll just do it at 20%. And we just hit decimate current. So you can see right now, we are down to 136,000. So it triangulates everything, but still manages to keep all the detail. Most likely, you won't even notice. And that's kind of the beauty of decimation. If you can get it down low enough without losing any, any real detail, you could absolutely use it to bake normal maps, as long as, again, you didn't lose your detail because it will take longer to bake a 5 million try model as opposed to a 2 million try model. So if you can chop that down and still get keep the detail that you want, uh, there's no reason not to. We could go lower than that. So we could click on the percentage and type 10, maybe. We'll go to 10%, and we'll decimate current again. And we still didn't really lose any detail, and now we're only at 63, or I'm sorry, 68,000. And if you look at the model now, the mesh, it still doesn't look any different than when it was uh, 600,000. So we really took it down. So you might want to do that for especially all your big pieces. So like the teeth, I managed to chop down. The eye, it's 49,000. It's not really going to get in our way. Our total is 2.5 million. 3D Coat can handle that. Even this 230,000, we could chop that down too. So if we go to Z plugin, pre-process current, should only take a few seconds. And Z plugin, decimate current. Now we're at 1.846 million. So that's, that's really good. That's a good size to retopo, and it still retains as much detail as we need. Probably even more detail than we need to retopo. Like we don't really need all of this, this kind of tertiary detail here. We don't really need it because we're not going to retopo that part. We're going to go over all of it. So when you're ready, make sure you save this file as uh, kind of. If you looked at my the little ball that I had up here, it says the name of the file, and then deci. That's just personal. I usually name it that just so I know that it's a file with decimated meshes in it. You can name it whatever you want, but I would definitely keep it separate than the one with your final really high resolution model. So traditionally, when we were done, we would export, and you would see you'd be exporting it as an OBJ. But we're not going to do that. We're going to export it as an FBX. And so that is also a plugin. So you can close down Decimation Master, and underneath it is FBX Export Import. Now, two things to notice here. The first one is we want to make sure that we're selecting all visible. That means all these eyeball things are turned on, and you see that the ball that we used for naming our file is off. So that means this will not get exported. But everything that is visible in 
and on will get exported. The next thing that is actually important for 3D coat is the FBX version. You can keep clicking on this and going to different years and it starts at 2016. For some reason, FBX 2016 does not work in the current version of 3D coat. So we would just need to click this one time and go down to 2014. If this is going into something like Substance Painter for baking uh, or other applications, even bringing it into 3D Studio Max, 2016 is, is fine. But for some reason, 3D Coat doesn't like FBX 2016. So just click it one time to go to 2014 and you can go all the way down to 2009. Uh, but 2016 is the highest Let's just keep it at 2014. And then when you're ready, you're just going to hit the export and we'll pick a place and we'll name it. You can name it whatever, but to creature hi, and I will probably do re topo just so I know because this might not be your high resolution model that you'll be baking. Maybe it's just for retopology because when you bake, you might want to have even more parts separated. This is good for what we're going to do for retopo. So we're going to click save and it's going to take a minute because it has to save each subtool individually, but it will all become one FBX at the end. And that FBX will retain all the names of the subtools. So I'll pause it. And then when I come back, we'll be ready to jump into 3D code. Okay, we're back. That took about maybe 30 seconds. So we're good to go. And we will hop right into 3D code. Okay, here we are when we are loaded up. This is usually what you will see. And we want to perform retopology, this option right here. And then you are left with uh, these options here. Usually the first one is the one you want to use because you want to import a reference mesh between two and four million. Now we chop down enough geometry to be in there. So that's what we want to do. These are different. Uh, I don't mess with these as much. Usually. I want to keep the retopology mesh or the reference mesh as low as possible. So this will usually be the option that I pick. And it's going to ask to find the, the FBX. So we're going to click on the retopo and open it up. Okay, that took about you know 20, 25 seconds to get in there. Now what you notice is all the pieces are in here and what you see on the side is all of the subtools that were exported with it body high eyes bottom now this lies under surface materials and if you don't see that when you first open up 3d coat and load in the model you can go to windows pop-ups and you will look for surface materials what that did was once it got into 3D Coat, it applied a default material to every piece that it saw in the FBX. So each one of these is its own material, which means you can hide, hide and show all the pieces that you want. Now this is going to be great for retopology. That way we can kind of single out some of those areas and work on them separately. So if I want to just work on the body for right now, I will just hide all these other ones. I would say give it a minute. It tends to be a little slow to register the, uh, the, the hiding of it. Okay, so everything's hidden except for the body. And the other thing we want to do is look for the 
if you pull this back, you will see retopo objects, and it starts with retopo group one. I don't know why this was kind of like this and hidden, but you should probably not see that. But if you do, maybe you just check. So you will see retopo objects in retopo group. That is basically a layer system that is for each thing that you retopo, the new geometry that you create. And right now we only have one layer. So what would be very efficient is to make a new layer for each one of these parts. Just like we have it here, instead of it all being on one, that way when we go to unwrap, you can isolate one thing at a time and unwrap them. You can hide pieces. So we'd still like to keep it separate. So I'm going to double click on Retopo Group 1 and name it Body Body High. So now this will match this. And then when we want to do the next one, which is like the Body Eyes, we will come over here to add a new layer and rename that Body High Eyes and go all the way down. So right now there's nothing in that layer because we have not performed any retopology. I'm not going to go too deep into the actual retopology of it. There is another video that covers that stuff. But generally, I like to use my favorite tool is the points and faces. Because I like to just click points and quickly make the faces that I need. Now with retopology comes the criteria of knowing how this model will animate and making sure that you have the right edge loops and edge flow. So usually what I will start out with, personally, you don't have to start out this way, is I want to make sure I get all the loops in the right places first. So for this we could use the strokes uh, button. And I also like to turn all the way up here. There's steady stroke, which almost is like a lazy mouse. And you can pay attention to number of segments, how many, once we finish the loop, how many it's going to divide it into. Right now it says 12, and that might be enough. And before we also do that, we also want to turn on symmetry. So we want to hit the S key for symmetry. It's enabled. We want to make sure that we want to turn on the X axis. You can also hide the symmetry plane. So even though you're in it, you don't see that obnoxious plane. You can turn it on. Sometimes it's nice to just automatically know where the, the middle is. So I'm going to start somewhere and draw a line. It can get a little finicky. If you can't get around to the other side, you can just start a new one and it will snap. And I made that connection. Now you would want to do one, one or two more. Oops, I'm going to take it, drag it, and make sure that it connects. Now, to complete the circle, all I have to do is draw one line straight down, and it's going to use that as a template. And once I'm done, I can hit the Enter key, and it will make that geometry. Now it's going to be a little funky here, so you might want to use your right mouse button to kind of rearrange these. But it's generally a nice quick way to get a loop going.
and with the points and faces option selected, if you hold down control, you can put new lines in here. So if I want to add a, another loop, I can put a loop right there. I can hold down control and then click. If I want to put more in here, I can do control and click. Now one thing you can do is go to, is select all of these. I want to try to uh, smooth these out and relax them. So there is the brush tool, which allows you to almost soft select move. And if you hold down the shift key, it acts as kind of a smoothing. It won't really do the border edges. It will just try to smooth the geometry that's in it. We don't really have a lot going on here. So the other thing you can do is go to the select and come up to faces up here. And I just did a double click. And then you can scroll down a little bit and look for relax. So I just clicked that a couple times and you can see that it smooths it out. Hit escape to get out of the selection. And you can see that it smoothed it out kind of averages it, it looks pretty good. And once I have that squared away, I might go to the next thing that would probably need those loops, like the eyes, maybe the mouth, anything else, you know, the other eye, the angular part up here. And that's pretty much it. The only thing that I wanted to introduce that was, it's not necessary per se, but it's just a new tool that they added in which was the the R fill. And what that does, it's almost like a cap, but it will try to actually make geometry. So for instance, if I had, oops. Now this isn't really how I would do it, but I just want to fill. If you have a hole like this, what our fill will do is if you hover over it, it's going to give you a preview of how it wants to actually make the connections and fill that in with geometry. Now, sometimes this works great for small holes and stuff like this. Um, I've done it on some patches that are bigger and it gets starts to get a little confused. The good thing is, is it's a preview, so you're not committing anything yet. So you could just kind of hover over a spot that you might want to quickly fill in. And if it looks like for the most part, you could just fill that in and then maybe weld or fix a couple things, then it might be worth your time to do that. If it looks like it's gonna get all messed up, then you know, don't use it. So if you wanna do that, you can just click and it filled it in for me. And then I might wanna go back into uh, the move or the you know, points, maybe just uh, slightly adjust it, but this could be a pretty big help with filling in big spots later on, or at least get you to a point where it did most of the work for you, and then you just kind of cleaned it up a little bit. It's, a, it's an automatic algorithm, so it's not always going to be perfect and give you the results that you want. But if it can help you, save you a little bit of time, I would recommend at least trying it. So that's going to be it for this video. The other previous video goes in depth with all the other tools in here for retopology. Uh, this was just a video to help you understand that you can use OBJs and FBX and this is how you would separate it. Um, just one last thing if you wanted to do one last part. So if I wanted to do the the upper teeth I'll unhide it, and then I would make a new, a new uh, layer. You could even hide the one that you had, and then you could also hide body high because that's the retopo part. I would make a new layer, and I would call it teeth upper.
So now this will be different than this one. So you could go through the strokes again if you wanted to start doing retopology here. You could just draw loops like this. It goes all the way around. Also a good tip is if you hit the if you hover over a spot on the model and you just hit the F key, when you rotate, it will kind of rotate on the pivot of where you hit the F key. So you can see it goes all the way around. I don't think I want 12 segments for those loops, so I'll bring that down to maybe eight. And then all I have to do is just draw one clean line down the side and hit enter. And you can see that it quickly filled in some stuff, gave us a new geometry. Whether or not you need all that geometry for the teeth will, you know, will be up to you. You can still go back into the points and faces and add, you know, some more custom cuts if you needed it. And that's it. And you can see that we have body high, which is this one, and you have teeth upper high, which is this one. And keep them all nice and separate. And then when we export it at the end, they'll be all combined, uh, and they will be all unwrapped, and then you'll be good to go to get into texturing. So that is it. Uh, good luck.